So, Pablo, we've talked a lot about consistency today, and I can imagine it's even more important in terms of films or TV series which are made based on books, uh, on those literary adaptations. Um, I can do a little coming out that I'm myself an author of subtitles for a, a series called Bridgerton uh, for one of the seasons, and this is a TV series based on books. Um, so, uh, I know that it can be very important to ensure consistency when translating such content, which is based on some previous content that already has been translated into multiple languages. And I know you uh, did uh, a study on this sort of thing, on translating, on subtitling films and series, which are adaptations of literary works. Yes, it was an interesting study and the sample was huge because I think there were 16 uh, literary pieces, 16 movies and 16 pieces of literature, not only novels, but there were plays uh, as well um, that, that I translated with my team and I asked the team to read a book uh, that the material is based on before translating, then translate the movie and then... Um, fill in a questionnaire about you know the usefulness of that book that the reasoning was was this uh, if you you are a, a translator and you receive an adaptation to translate and sometimes the deadline is really tight like you, you don't really have a lot of time to to finish the the translation and, and hand it over should you try to find time to squeeze in i don't know a 300 page book uh, to be able to prepare a better translation or maybe you are a, you are a project manager and maybe you should you know setting some deadlines you should give your translator extra time and maybe extra pay because well it's it's some labor you might not be interested in that book on your own maybe add some extra time and some extra pay for you know so that your translator does read the book and uh, prepares a better translation and the results in a nutshell were very different and surprising because in some cases uh, the book did, I thought, well, let me start from the beginning. I thought the book always helps or at worst it doesn't, uh, it doesn't hamper your, your translation. Okay. It, it doesn't do any, any damage to read the book, but it turns out it does in some cases. First thing, uh, it does help a lot. Uh, you understand the story better. Uh, maybe there are some uh, pieces of terminology, like I don't know. In Lord of the Rings, you have the creatures and um, and the places. In uh, in Harry Potter, you have the potions and so on. If your audience knows these um, uh, these pieces of terminology in translation, they will be happy if you use it and unhappy if you come up with, with different translations. Some time ago, there was Dune in cinemas, which I read and I was happy to discover that the translator used this canonical translation that I read. Uh, and it seems that I'm a, I'm a member of a toxic fan base because I would be uh, dissatisfied if, if the translator used some other equivalents to, to these. Uh, to these um, to these terminology to this terminology, so I guess viewers can have some expectations about the translation, and, and we should factor this in, in in the translation process. So that's one thing. It you can sometimes copy entire dialogue lines, even uh, the question of authorship and legal rights is, is an issue here. But sometimes you have some recurring lines, like we did. Um, uh, we did Dickens, the, the Christmas Carol, and um, where um, Scrooge says humbug, that's his like recurring phrase. And you can you can borrow in in a way this this translation from the book into your subs. So this is also how it's helpful recurring dialogue lines, for instance. But it turned out to be a waste of time in some cases. If the book is descriptive, for instance, there were a few books like that. Uh, the book was completely descriptive. There are no dialogues. So, you know, the, the plot is there from the book, but uh, all the dialogues are invented. So, you know, reading it doesn't help you much. Uh, another thing was uh, 
where the movie is completely reworked uh, for you know for various reasons. For instance, we did the Hunchback of Notre Dame, uh, which is uh, it was an old version that was shot during the Hays Code, and the the main villain of the book is an is a bishop, is an archbishop. So they didn't want the villain to be a bishop, you know, who falls in love with a woman and so on. Uh, it's basically controversial from the religious point of view. So they switched the characters altogether completely so that a different person is the villain. And the, the translator who read the book and then were to translate the movie reported that it was completely confusing who does what. And uh, it, it, not only, it didn't help her. In fact, it was it was a hindrance because the movie was so different from from the book that uh, that not only was it a waste of time reading that I mean a waste of time from the point of view of the commission I mean she read a beautiful piece of classic lit literature but uh, from from the point of view of the assignment it it wasn't necessary. Uh, you might have, you know, characters that are deleted, characters that are merged. Uh, an interesting problem, for instance, is with the third language. Like in a book, you can have something in a different language and you just add a footnote and you write the translation. So you have, say, Spanish and Polish at the same time. And the book is in English originally. But in the subtitles or whatever other form of audiovisual translation, you need to choose. And now it, the, the book doesn't help you because they have both. It has both, both texts. And now you need to choose, do I go for Spanish? Do I go for Polish? Do I mix? Maybe just to retain the flavor. So uh, there are a lot of interesting uh, findings in, in the study.